Hey y'all, and welcome to the last of our three-part series on transform orientations. Now in this video, I'm going to be covering view, cursor, and how to create a custom transform orientation from a selected object. So let's start with the view. Now the view uh, it simply aligns the z-axis with the screen and the viewing angle. So as we rotate around our object and view our cube from different angles, you can see that the axes rotate to match that uh, angle of viewing. So that way the X is always pointed horizontally and the Y is always pointed vertically on our screen. Now the Z axis is actually going to move the object closer to us or further away from us uh, at our view or along our viewing angle. So we would do that and take it back. You'll see that. Now if we switch into orthographic mode, you really won't be able to tell. You can see that it's moving as it crosses over the global uh, X and Y position axes, um, but you won't see it moving closer or further just because orthographic is on. But I just wanted to show you that's really how that works. So there's not, it's not moving off on an angle like it looks like with perspective mode on. It's literally staying in one line going closer to us or further away from us. All right, so that's the viewing transform orientation. We also have the 3D cursor orientation, which by default is lined up with the global axes because the 3D cursor by default is lined up with the global axes. But you also have the ability to rotate your 3D cursor to the current viewing angle uh, by simply choosing the cursor tool and rotating it. Now once we do that, you can actually see on the cursor we have a little tick mark here and these are the 3D cursor axes. So if we go back and to our move tool, you can see now that the X, Y, and Z transform orientation now matches that of the 3D cursor. I gotta be honest, I will probably never use this tool, but it's something that you can use if you want, um, and I'm sure it could be useful in specific circumstances, but it's just something that Blender has, and I don't personally see that much of a use for, but it's something you can do. Now, the last one could be kind of important, so let's go ahead and create a duplicate cube here. So, Shift D, and we'll just move this off in a direction. And then let's say we rotate this along the current x-axis and then maybe along the current y or the z. And there we go. Well, what we can do is we can create now a custom transformation orientation from a selected object. So this is currently located or rotated uh, nowhere, right? It's rotated along the global axes. But if we wanted this cube and its local axes to be a standard transform orientation, all we'd have to do is select this cube and then come over here and click the plus button and we could name this whatever we wanted to. So just call it local cube or local cub because I don't know how to press ease. And if I select this other cube now, you can see that this is the standard or that this is the custom transform orientation that I have chosen. If I want to delete that, I simply hit the X and that transform orientation is gone. And then I just choose back to global and everything will go back to the way it was. All right, so those are our transform orientation options. You're probably going to use global and local the most. Normal when you're working in edit mode. Gimbal is a little bit more advanced. Um, and sometimes the view. I really don't see a need for the 3D cursor, but uh, being able to create your own transform orientations could come in handy at a future point. I'm Sir Pinkbeard, and thanks for sticking it out through this transform orientation video series, and I will see you in the next video.